Hey there folks, it's Javier Blog 208 coming to you live, doing a little bit of a different video today, you know. I'm still an independent blogging channel, but I'm just kind of doing a little bit different today. I'm gonna to try to do the best, give you the best arguments that I can on defending the LDS church. So as many of you know, or as many people who are my new LDS subscribers, and I know that my subscriber list has soared since I uh, posted my video of the Catholic priest who became um, the testimony of the Catholic priest who became um, who joined the, who who came to the who came to the Church of Jesus Christ of, of Latter Day Saints. Um, since then, my subscriber list has soared by well over like fifty people or something like that, and that video alone has gone over 4,000 views and over 100 likes and reactions and tons of comments and something like that. So I'm guessing that a lot of my new subscribers are part of the church. So I think that's lovely. Um, so because of that, I'm going to be doing some more church-related content on my, on my blog. And also, I'm going to be doing... Um, I'm also going to be doing some more, a lot of more independent content like I've always been doing. But just stay tuned in general. Anyways, my best arguments in defending the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. First of all, there's so many misconceptions about the church. So many misconceptions. And I'm going to start diving into them. I, I've heard, I was talking to my auntie Fran the other day. My aunt Fran the other day. She's 81 years old. The oldest person alive on my dad's side of the family. And she basically, um, even though she says she's attended the church and that her own son was part of the church and my uncle Chris, one of the biggest Jesus lovers I've ever known, she said that, I don't know, and I mean that, I mean that, the biggest Jesus lover I've probably ever known in the family, I just found out was actually a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, I thought that's pretty cool. His name was Uncle Chris. First thing, I, I met him one time, maybe twice in my life, but when we went up to the mountains in Colorado back in 2013, and he, one of the first things he said to me was, I hear you're a Jesus lover. And I just felt the Holy Spirit in him. You know, he is so, that man was so strong in the Lord. He died um, of a heart attack, unfortunately. May he rest in peace. Um, but my auntie friend, despite all that, she thinks that the Mormon church worships Joseph Smith and um, that we don't really believe in Jesus Christ. All false. I'm going to debunk it all. So as, a, as an active participant, a newly, a relatively new active participant of the church myself, um, I'm going to start by saying that, A, first, the, pre, the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints does not worship Joseph Smith. They view him as a prophet. Now, let me explain what I view him as. I have a hard time personally um, accepting him as a prophet. <laughs> I really do. I mean, the dude has a lot of flaws. He was a Freemason. Um, and I know about Freemasons. You guys can go and watch one of my videos below about exposing Freemasonry, from, about that guy who exposed Freemasonry from top to bottom. Um, I also am aware that, you know, when Joseph Smith um, started the church and along with Brigham Young, they were both Freemasons, as were some of the founders, that um, the reality of the matter is that, you know, that they did mix quite a few Freemasonry traditions into the church, which is really unfortunate, like the part of like, if you ever reveal the temple secrets, then you have to have your heart ripped out or something like that. That was from Freemasonry. I think that's disgusting. I will never agree with that. Um, so it's tough to um, defend him as like a prophet prophet. But do I believe that he received revelations from God? Absolutely. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, do I believe that God used Joseph Smith? I, the way I really, and yes, Joseph Smith had a ton of wives, of course. He was a Freemason. He had tons of wives and he was a very, 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 very flawed character. So I'm not, we, first of all, Latter-day Saints, you know, we cannot deny that. You know, we cannot deny that Joseph Smith was a very flawed, messed up character. We can't paint over it with a nice brush, like pretending like, oh, he's this beautiful prophet and all that stuff. You know, no, he was a mess. He had a lot of problems, but I still believe God used him. I still believe that God used him to get the Book of Mormon translated. And I do believe that God appeared to him. And I definitely believe his testimony when he was 14, when he was asking the Lord, which church shall I join? And the Lord says to him, join none of them. They're all whacked. I definitely 100% believe that was the Lord. And I, you can see that video on the bottom. And I know that he's had numerous testimonies throughout his life. I want to start posting about another one later. Um, 
I think one of the more powerful testimonies about Joseph Smith, and this is also written in the Doctrine of Covenants, is that when he was a Methodist, back when he was growing up and he was a Methodist, and his brother Alvin died. And then because he was a, the Methodist church basically said that his brother Alvin was not baptized. Um, he was not he was not baptized. He was not saved. So he is now in hell. Ooh, that's not that's not a kind thing to say. Um, so basically, the guy, the, the, the Methodist messenger or whatever, basically told Joseph Smith family that the brother was now in hell. Literally told him that he could not be saved. He was not baptized. So now he's in hell. Um, but then. As Joseph Smith was praying and seeking the Lord and seeking the Lord, the Lord himself revealed to him that his brother Alvin was in fact in the kingdom of God, in paradise, in the kingdom. So it, that's also in the Doctrine and Covenants that the, his brother Alvin was actually with the Lord and he was saved and he was in the kingdom. So I think that was a very beautiful story. I'm going to actually read that to you. Um, as much as I would love to read it to you in this video, I unfortunately have the notes for that Doctor and Covenants verse on my phone, which I'm using to make this video. So I'm going to have to save that for another video. But I thought that was a really amazing testimony um, when the Lord basically showed Joseph Smith that your brother is actually in heaven, not in hell. And it goes to show how merciful God is, you know, at the end of the day. How merciful he is. Like, you know, at the end of the day, even Doug Perry, Fellowship of the Martyrs, he even said that, you know, there might be people in heaven that we may never guess will be in heaven. You know, it shows that God's mercy is beyond our understanding. God's grace is beyond our understanding. So, I mean, so the fact that God actually revealed to Joseph Smith that his brother's in heaven, um, to me, that's amazing. That's amazing. That is an amazing testimony of God's mercy. So carrying on. Okay, Joseph Smith. My opinion on Joseph Smith, very, very, very flawed man who God used. Now, God can use any one of us because we're all flawed human beings. We're all sinners. We're all a mess. We're all a mess. But who are we to tell God who he can use and who we can't? Same thing with Donald Trump. Now, I'm not, I'm not endorsing Donald Trump prophecies at all. I actually don't personally don't believe in those. But I will say this. That if God wanted to use somebody as corrupt and messed up as greedy as Donald Trump, and that's just the truth about the guy, who are we to say that God couldn't? If God wanted to use someone as corrupt, as greedy, and messed up as King uh, King James, um, and there was a lot of problems with King James, but he wanted to use him to translate the Bible, the, the lovely King James Bible, who are we to tell God who he can and cannot use? Same thing with Joseph Smith. If God wanted to use Joseph Smith to translate the Book of Mormon, which is not another gospel, by the way, and we'll get to that in a minute. If God wanted to use Joseph Smith to translate the Book of Mormon, who are we to tell God who he can and cannot use? God can use anybody he wants. God can use the most imperfect of people. God can use the most messed up and sinful of people to accomplish the biggest purposes that he wants to accomplish. And he can use anybody he wants anybody he wants and that is something so i am i have come to faith that i do believe that god has used joseph smith that god did use king james and maybe god's even using donald trump who knows that that's that he probably is me yeah i think he did actually i'm not saying that donald trump is like revered or whatever but he did get real roby weight overturned i thought that was pretty cool um anyway moving on so is the book of mormon god uses flawed characters and that's why God can use any one of us, and God could have just as well have used Joseph Smith. And now, is the Book of Mormon another gospel? No, it is not another gospel. There is only one gospel. One gospel. This is what the church believes. This is what we believe, what Latter-day Saints believe, that there is one gospel, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel that he came in the flesh, Jesus Christ came in the flesh, died, died for the sins of the world, was crucified for the sins of the world, and died and rose again on the third day. That is one gospel. He died on the cross as atonement for the sins of the whole world. The whole world. The only way anybody can be saved is through faith in Jesus Christ. It's through putting their trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Alone. And trusting him for your salvation. I believe that. And that's what the church teaches too. The Book of Mormon is the gospels being the gospel being preached in old america the bible 
is the gospel being preached in old Israel and the context of the Bible. The context of the Bible takes place in Israel. It takes place for when the apostles were preaching in the book of Acts, preaching to the people. Well, after Christ's crucifixion, the apostles were preaching in the book of Acts, preaching to the people of the time, preaching to the people, you know, the Romans, uh, the people of, the, of Israel and all that, getting people baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the story of the apostles, their preaching, their persecution, and ultimately the story of Paul, um, a guy I have some, I, I got mixed feelings about him, but that's not for this video. Um, ultimately, the gospel, the Bible is for, the, is for that time period, not just for the people of that time period, but for the context of that time period, which was Israel, which was the areas, you know, around Israel. The Bible had the Bible had nothing to do with America. The Book of Mormon is the gospel being preached in the Americas. The Book of Mormon is the prophets of the Americas preaching the gospel, baptizing people in the name of Jesus Christ, and etc. etc. You know, Jesus Christ revealing himself to the natives of this land, the natives of America, the, the people in America. The preaching of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ in America. That is the story of the Book of Mormon. That's all it is. And, and really, it's not, it's not a different gospel. It's the same gospel. The preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died and rose again, is an atonement for the sins of the world. It even says in the Bible that God wishes for none to perish. And we know today that God is revealing himself to people all over the world. That's why Muslims are having dreams of Jesus Christ. That's why people all over the world are waking up to the reality of Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. And... That's what was preached to the people of that time in the context in the Bible. And that's what was preached to the people of the old Americas in the Book of Mormon. And that's what Jesus, why Jesus Christ revealed himself to so many people in the Book of Mormon, saying that I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the, I am the one that was given as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. This is the story of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the old Americas, the baptisms that happened in the old Americas, the conversions that happened in the old Americas, people being filled with the Holy Spirit in the old Americas. This is the story of the preaching of Jesus Christ in the old Americas, of the spreading of the gospel in the old Americas, and the prophets who God appointed. The Bible was for a certain context, and the Book of Mormon was for a certain context. The Bible was for a certain time and place, the Book of Mormon was for a certain time and place. The Bible took place in old Israel and in Rome and whatever. The Book of Mormon took place in old Americas. It's one gospel. It's one gospel. It's the same gospel. And that is the defense of the Book of Mormon. So anyway, to sum it up, the prophets of Israel, the apostles of Jesus Christ, the apostle Paul, apostles Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and whatever, all the apostles of Jesus Christ, and the prophets of the Bible, preaching in Israel, preaching in the preaching, you know, preaching Jesus Christ to the people, the Romans of the time, in that context of the world. And these are the prophets of the old Americas. It's that simple. The prophets of the old Americas preaching Jesus Christ to the people of the time, baptizing people in the name of Jesus Christ to the people of the time. The story of the gospel in America, the one gospel of Jesus Christ. That's, it's basically, that's the Latter-day, that's the Latter-day Saint faith in the nutshell, you know. God used an imperfect man named Joseph Smith to translate this book, to, um, to write about the conversion and the spreading of the gospel and the baptisms and the people giving their lives to Christ and everything in the old Americas. There is one Jesus, one gospel. And that is the sum of the Book of Mormon. And a perfect man used to translate. And God can use anybody. That is basically the summary of the, the LDS faith. Now I understand also that there's a lot of um, more, a lot more deeper things in the, in the, in the faith, you know, and a lot of questions. I'm going to also do another video um, answering those. 
um, and also giving you my personal opinion on it because there's not everything, you know, it's like there's my, my personal opinion um, does have some differs, but we're going to dissect those in a different video. But the crutch of it is, you know, the Lord used Joseph Smith to translate the Book of Mormon. And the Book of Mormon is the, te is the story of the preaching of the Gospels in the Old America and the prophets of the Old Americas and Jesus Christ revealing himself to people in the Old Americas and people giving them their lives to Christ in the Old Americas, people getting baptized in the Old Americas, people, you know, Jesus revealing himself and everything, you know, people getting filled with the Holy Spirit in the Old Americas and the preaching in the Old Americas. And that's basically... That's basically the Book of Mormon in a nutshell. And that's basically the, the largest defense for the LDS faith in general, just, just for that period. Anyway, um, I'm gonna in another video I'm gonna be dissecting a lot more into into um different aspects of, of like the church teachings and all that. And I think you might find you guys might find that interesting, but you know, at the end of the day, I say all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. My, my savior, my personal savior, the one who died for my sins, the one who died for your sins, the one who died as atonement, as preached in the Gospels for the sins of the world, the only the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to heaven. And people in the LDS church revere Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven, as the one who died for your sins as the one you have to put your trust in to be saved. And every person in the LDS church that I know of has testified in the name of Jesus Christ, has testified Jesus Christ as their Savior, as their Redeemer, as the one who died on the cross for them. And I've met some of the strongest followers of Jesus Christ that I've ever met come out of the LDS church. And if you go to testimony meeting every month, you're going to hear that you can hear those testimonies for yourself. Some of those powerful testimonies for Christ you'll ever hear. And um, one thing I want to make clear is a cessationist, anybody who's a cessationist who thinks that the gifts of the Spirit aren't for today are wrong. The Lord speaks to people today. I believe with all my heart the Lord speaks to people today. And the Lord has spoken to many people in the church and outside of the church. You know, like I told you, I don't believe that the Holy Spirit works within one specific church. But the Lord has spoken to many people in the church. The Lord has changed so many lives in the church. And, you know, I, I met a person who was an atheist in Germany for a long time, a long time atheist in Germany. He's now one of the biggest followers of Jesus Christ I've ever seen. And he's in the church. He'll go to anyone in the street and tell you Jesus loves you. And he, and he came to Christ in the church. So I believe that, you know, the Lord is working in so many people in the church of Jesus Christ. And that, you know, at the end of the day, one gospel, one Jesus Christ, one way to heaven. And that is through Jesus Christ. And every person in the LDS church that I have met has testified that Jesus Christ is the only way. And that Jesus Christ is their savior. And that there shouldn't be any confusion. There shouldn't be any more, any division, you know, on this, you know. And I say all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm, I'm thank you for uh, listening to the, the video. And um, I will talk to you guys later. Tuning out.